Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and thanks for dropping in for yet another Ham Shack chat. This time I'm going to be doing a review of Grid Tracker, which is behind me here, and it's a companion piece of software to the WSJTX suite of digital modes. Grid Tracker significantly increases your situational awareness of what's going on with whatever digital mode you've selected. In this case, we're going to be looking at FT8. Now, two points before we move on. First, this is going to be a high level review. I'm going to show you what Grid Tracker does, but not how it does it. I'm not going to go through the setup. Those setup videos will be in future videos. If something I show you is intriguing, please put a note down in the comments. You state the obvious, Spock. So I can be sure to focus these future videos to your needs. Secondly, this video presumes that you already have a good working knowledge of WSJTX. You've got it up and running on your system. I will be using my Yaesu FT991A as I make these demonstrations, but for all practical purposes, this video is radio agnostic and will apply to the relationship between WSJTX and Grid Tracker without any concern given to your choice of rig. This is the Grid Tracker map. And as you can see, it is pretty busy, mostly because I'm zoomed in. The first thing that I want to show you are these blue lines that are coming off of a central location. That central location is me. And these are being sent by WSJTX out to PSK Reporter and then being read by Grid Tracker to display who is hearing my call sign. You notice that I'm on 20 meters right here, and I've got a lot of these blocks. These blocks are four digit maidenhead locators. The color coding for everything up here is completely selectable up in the settings, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Just be aware that you can set it up the way you want. Also, there are about 20 or 30 separate styles of maps that you can use for the background. This is the one that works for me. You can go find the one that works for you the best. Uh, some of the color coding, uh, these black lines here are QSOs in progress by somebody else. In the blocks, you'll see these light blue ones. These are stations that I have confirmed as uh, I've QSL'd those. The green means somebody is calling CQ. You can zoom your map in and out, take it all the way out, and you can see I got a lot of stuff happening around in Europe that I've confirmed. Now we've seen that you can customize the map with colors and line styles, as well as having multiple maps to choose from. That not only makes the display your own, but it increases your situational awareness while operating. If you're enjoying this video, please take a moment to pop that thumbs up icon and give me a like. Do you like me? So you can see I popped up to the 10 meter band and wanted to show you what's happening down here in the call roster. Call roster is using your log to identify a few things down here. Also, I have it set to CQ only, so I'll set that to CQ only as well. You can see that I have HA1RB calling CQ from a grid that I haven't worked. Now this DM13, I've worked. He's also a new DXCC country on 10 meters. If I come down here to K7ULS, you can see, I can see he's from Utah. It's a grid I haven't worked and a county I haven't worked. The, the highlighted ones. The nice thing about the call roster is I can sort it by the decibel level that I'm receiving, which is these numbers up here, which are not sorted. I'm now calling K7ULS, him over here, and he's highest on my list at a 6 dB signal to noise. And I'm going to log it. I've only been demonstrating using the FT8 mode, but you can also use Grid Tracker with any of the WSJTX modes. So if you change to FT4, 
Grid Tracker will change to work with the new mode. Please help me get the word out about Grid Tracker and other videos of mine by sharing. Can I tell you a secret? With your friends and cohorts in the amateur radio community, especially on social media. It really helps me out. Now let's talk a little bit about logging. I use the Ham Radio Deluxe logging program. You can use many others. For example, Log4OM will work in the same way. Obviously, the setup's a little different. A Ham Radio Deluxe logbook will run standalone without the rest of HRD up. So HRD is not up, but Ham Radio Deluxe Logbook is. And when you have it set up that way, you will get this error message and just click out of it. It's just informing you that HRD is not turned on. Now you can see some of the stations I've already worked and I have not yet uploaded them here. That is just for the database display here. Since we just worked K7ULS and we logged him, he's sitting here but I have not yet sent it to Logbook of the World. Or did I? However, if I open up my Logbook of the World and I go Most Recent QSOs, you will see that K7ULS has already been uploaded. This is another feature that you can set up in Grid Tracker. When I'm done for the day and I'm about ready to shut off my HRD Logbook, I will go ahead and come in here and update it completely so that you can see if you've been verified and you can see if you've been sent. So I have a yes down here. That means I worked this station and uploaded him. And today I've worked five different stations. Some of them I worked before I started recording. I've added a link in the video description down there where you can download the Grid Tracker program. There's also an online wiki where you can get setup instructions and learn more about setting up your grid tracker for your system. Now, another assumption that I've made is that you already know how to download and install software to your computer. One last thing I wanted to show you is that grid tracker can talk to you. Now, I've got my sound turned down because it can get a little overwhelming at times. Right now, I've got it set up so that if a new state pops up, or a new DXCC pops up, it's going to tell me that something's there. So that way, I can be working on something in the background, just have this running, then just come over here and see what popped up and work them if I want to. Turn my sound back up, wait for this cycle to finish, DXCC. and I have a wanted DXCC. Over here under band activity, you can see my color codes are set up, so Wanted DXCC. Wanted DXCC. And you can hear how it can be a little hassle. So I generally do not use this during my normal operations. But it was fun while it lasted. Remember that the purpose of this video was to show you what Good Tracker could do, not how to make it do those things. There will be other videos following that will provide you with the setup instructions for many of the features that I've shown here. Now, I could have included the setup instructions for each and every feature that I showed you in one really long video, but I find that digesting small bits of information is easier than trying to swallow everything all at once. As I post those follow-up videos, I will be adding links and information to the video description here. So drop in occasionally to see what's new in the grid tracker world. 73 until the next, hey y'all. As always, I am at your service. Thanks for taking time out to watch this video. And I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed putting it all together for you. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out. A sequel? Yeah.